Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at one of the papers from Netflix which is called Calibrated Recommendations. I also have a video on my channel about probability calibration or model calibration. The idea of probability or model calibration it's bi is a bit different from calibrated recommendations. So let me explain the difference. When it comes to probability calibration or model calibration, same thing. The goal is that the predicted probabilities coming from a model, ML model, is aligned well with the actual likelihood of events. For example, if we consider 100 individuals with a predicted probability in the range of 80 to 85 percent, then in reality, 80 to 85 percent of the people should actually have the disease. Uh, the ML model is built to predict disease and if we take 80 to 85 percent bucket of having the probability to disease then actually in reality 80 to 85 per people out of 100 should have the disease. This means the model predictions are calibrated with the actual likelihood of events. But when it comes to calibrated recommendations, the idea is very beautiful. It says that let's say user watches 70 romance movies and 30 action movies. Then if we recommend something to the user, it should comprise of about 70% romance movies and 30% action movies. Let's say you are giving 10 recommendations, around 7 should be of romance and 3 should be of action. And if this happens, it's called calibrated recommendation. In the recommended list of items, calibration ensures that various past areas of interest of a user are reflected with their corresponding proportions. And it's seen the lesser interest of the user gets crowded out by a user's main interest. So basically in this case, if 70% of orientation of users is towards romantic movies, if we don't do this kind of calibrated recommendation and just do what normal recommendation system does, that is predict the probability of liking a movie and just sort order based on uh, these probabilities, then it can happen that uh, most of the movies are romance and uh, users minor interest like action or some other categories gets crowded by the main interest which is romance movie so most of the movies are romantic so it's not calibrated and as we are discussing this paper this can be prevented by calibrated recommendation and also in the paper they have uh, quantified a metric how to say that whether the recommendation list is calibrated or not and also they have come up with a re-ranking algorithm which can in which will ensure that the uh, recommendation finally provided are calibrated now let's look to the introduction section. In the introduction they have uh, explained that recommendation system which are trained are more biased towards accuracy. That is they should be more uh, biased towards relevance that the whatever movie has been recommended the has better chances of conversion but not towards this uh, category nuances. And uh, the recommender system strained towards accuracy can generate list of recommended items that focus on the main interest of the user. Hence, the um, lesser interest areas of the user like let's say uh, action movies or some other minor category like drama gets underrepresented or even absent. And this carries the risk of gradually narrowing down users areas of interest because we are not showing those category items to the user and uh, the user may get limited to a filter bubble which is just the main category he is interested in and calibration as a general concept in machine learning has recently it's been getting a lot of uh, attraction and the reason for resurgence is the in the context of fairness of ml uh, model and uh, as i was explaining before the classification algorithm is called calibrated the model calibration or uh, probability calibration is a bit different where we ensure that the predicted probability represents the actual likelihood of events here we are saying that calibrated recommendation basically means various interests of the users in the recommended list are in the actual proportion of their uh, liking so in that way we can say that the recommendations are calibrated now uh, in a motivating example they have actually proved that uh, if we don't do any uh, calibrated recommendation or calibrate the recommendations then uh, there is a chance of a major category dominating so they have shown this example let's say user has 70 uh, has watched 70 romance movies and 13 action movies and um, if we train a classifier to predict the uh, conversion rate for uh, a movie for the user 
then how will we do that right so one way we can do is we can just uh, write it as a um, product of two probabilities so first of all we can find the probability that uh, given the user what are what is the chances of him liking a genre which is gr which is romantic genre and it's 0.7 right because 70 percent of the movies are he has watched are towards uh, romance movies similarly we can find given the user what is the probability of him liking action movies it will be 0.3 now finally what we want to find is what is the liking of users towards a particular movie i so what we can how we can find is we can first find uh, the probability of user given genre and genre given genre what is the probability of user liking this movie right so it can be write, written as p uh, u uh, given u probability of g and given g probability of i so uh, given user what is the probability of liking a genre and given genre what is the probability of liking the movie now after doing this and training it on um, uh, training these probabilities to be learned in movie lens data set which is a open source data set they found that the most probable action movie that is the rank one action movie when compared with 10th most romantic movie uh, uh, its probability is lesser so that's what they have shown that given the user the 10th movie in the romantic list has higher probability than the first movie in action list so what does it prove it proved that if you are uh, just sorting movies based on these probabilities then there will be all 10 movies based on uh, romantic zone, genre and in this way the major category has dominated and there is a bias and uh, the recommendation system is not very uh, fair so to ensure that the fairness is there uh, they have introduced calibrated recommendation which you will see in more details so this is the proof that uh, uh, if we just do this uh, probabilities learning and sort by descending order of them there can be bias towards the major categories next the authors have talked about latent digital allocation uh, it has nothing to do with the actual algorithm but this is just a motivating algorithm that in nlp uh, there is a generative algorithm to generate new documents which is latent digital allocation and what it does is it says that if i have to generate a new document uh, first i have to uh, uh, it happens in two step process so first is user selects the genre or in case of nlp topic and given a topic they select the word uh, and in here given a genre they select a movie right so user first select a genre or topic and then a movie or word in a selected genre so it doesn't have what they are trying to say it doesn't happen in a deterministic way that you find probabilities and simply rank order but in reality uh, the assumption is that the users uh, watching something is more of a two step procedure and it's more of a generative procedure that that is they sample the genre of their choice for example what they want to watch today and then uh, within that they will select what they uh, within that genre what they want to watch right so if you uh, recommend movies based this way that first you uh, sample the genre and then within the genre, within that genre you sample a movie that will be less relevant but it will be more calibrated so that is just a motivated example they have given and also they have said that a movie can belongs to multiple genre and all and those things are taken care in the lda so lda is a motivating algorithm now uh, now we have uh, moved to the core of the paper which is the most important part uh, that first of all how can you finally say that your recommendation is calibrated not calibrated you need some metrics to quantify it so here they have very elegantly defined the metrics so uh, whenever you want something you will have to uh, you will have to uh, tell that what is your target distribution there will be one target distribution and you will see that where you are with your recommended distribution so there will be two distribution what is the target or ideal distribution that you can say here my probabilities are fully uh, calibrated and what you have recommended uh, what is the distribution of it and if these two distributions are similar then you can say your uh, recommendations are calibrated that's the main idea so what they have done is they have first uh, defined the ideal distribution that what should be the ideal distribution to be recommended to the user and how they have found it they have said that for a user the ideal journal recommendation is um, simply the movies they have watched right so let's say they have watched 70 movies of romance 30 movies of action then it should be 0.7 towards romance 0.3 towards action but they have done one more additional 
uh, thing to it that instead of just taking a simple average they have taken a weighted average depending on the latency if user has watched a movie recently then that is given more weightage in determining the genre and uh, that's the target distribution now we have the target or ideal distribution to recommend and uh, the distribution of recommended list that what you have recommended what is the distribution of it that can be simply the movie given the movie what what is its genre and uh, we can take an average of it or we can take a weighted average and here the weight will be uh, where that movie lies in the list if it lies in the top or second then it has uh, more chances of being watched right so you can do a weighted average based on which rank the movie is recommended so that becomes your rec recommended distribution so you have p which is your target or ideal distribution use, uh, use uh, depending on users uh, watch history and q is the recommended distribution depending on what you have recommended where you have done a weighted average depending on which movies are there in the recommended list now uh, how to find that whether two distributions are uh, similar uh, you can do that using multinomial test or fisher's exact test and there are other methodologies as well but what authors have done they have gone with kullback divergence which is kl divergence what kl divergence does it takes a target distribution and see the difference how far the uh, recommended distribution is from it so this is the formula of kl divergence which is pretty generic and standardized so they have used that and uh, and they have done one more adjustment for example user has also let's say 2% affinity towards drama movie just 2% and in your recommended distribution there is no drama movie then be drama uh, probability becoming zero in recommended list can create uh, problems because it will make the distribution unstable to make the recommended distribution more stable what they have said the recommended distribution is the recommended distribution that we have just calculated that is depending on what has been recommended in the list and where the i movie lies in the list we have weighted average based on that but also some so what you are saying is your recommended distribution is 0.001 percent of your target distribution and remaining is the recommended distribution so it's same as recommended distribution just that uh, you have added some uh, weightage to, uh, to of the target distribution to maintain that stability that that zero thing doesn't happen and finally they have shown that kl divergence is a very good metric because in case of perfect calibration it comes out to be zero zero lower the kl divergence better the uh, uh, better the differences between two distribution is and better your calibrated recommendations are and they have also shown that uh, uh, it is very sensitive to small discrepancies for example let's say uh, if user's interest for a genre is 2% and you have recommended 1%, then that is considered as a larger error compared to 50% being real and you have recommended only 49%, right? So they have so said that uh, uh, if they, for the lower uh, or tail interest, it will penalize more compared to the major interest. So that is a good property and it's more uniform and less extreme distribution. And they've also told that they could have used Hellinger distance, but uh, it came out that callback divergence was better. And Hellinger distance is not, nothing, but it's uh, norm two of the uh, two distributions. Like uh, you take the square norm of the two distribution, but they have said that KL divergence was, was more stable. So what happened just now, we have defined a uh, metric, which is we have defined the ideal or target distribution, and we have defined the recommended uh, distribution and we are just finding the difference between the two lower the difference better calibrated your recommendations are now how to calibrate and how to make this metric lower right so for calibration uh, they have told that calibration of recommendation is a list property you finally have a recommended list and you see that whether it's calibrated or not so it's not a movie property it's the final recommended list property and uh, uh, so uh, and also if your probably if your list is like completely 100% calibrated it may not be very relevant so you need to balance between the two that if you just sort order by probabilities that is that will have the maximum relevance but if you give some weightage to kl divergence as well which is uh, calibration it will be uh, a calibrated distribution as well so you uh, take the you do a trade off between relevance and calibrated recommendation and this is called maximum marginal relevance so you find a list which uh, trade offs between uh, the relevance and also calibrated recommendation and this lambda how much to trade off between them that can be a hyperparameter 
Now finding a list which and finding a list given the lambda is a tough problem. It's a NP hard problem. You can't directly find a list which will have the most optimal solution because it's a NP, NP hard problem. So there are some greedy algorithms or greedy optimization possible. Uh, uh, greedy optimization of a surrogate submodular function and it ensures optimality that your results won't be bad than uh, this. Uh, numbers that 1 minus 1 by e optimality guarantee it gives you you can create your own greedy algorithm that uh, you give some weightage to it you keep on selecting the uh, items such that relevance is also matched and also calibrated recommendations are respected and also there exists this kind of greedy uh, optimizer like surrogate submodular function there is a link to the paper which also guarantees uh, optimality to some level so that is how they have uh, optimized the list through a greedy optimization for calibration and trade-off between uh, relevance and calibrated recommendations. Next is a very interesting thing, diversity. They have talked about diversity because in case of recommendation system, diversity is also an important concept. So they have compared diversity and calibration. So what is diversity? Diversity is defined as minimal redundancy or similarity among the recommendations. So it's not like if you are recommending a romance movies, next set of all movies are movie, uh, romance or romantic. And similarly for an e-commerce, if you are recommended a shoe, then it shouldn't happen that in your kind of uh, dynamic homepage feed, and next all recommendations are shoes only. You need to uh, diversify your recommendations so that user interest keeps on increasing and as well as you are also giving uh, views to other categories in your platform. So diversity is very important in any recommendation system as a long time, long term goal. So they have told that diversity means that your uh, recommendations are not very duplicate and there is good diversity of different kind of movies. And the way it's different from calibrated recommendations is we, can, we are saying in calibrated recommendation user may be interested in multiple topics then there should be representation of all topics. But let's say user has never seen children movie or documentaries. In diversity we say that there should be a diversity angle as well that we should also uh, show them something that they have never seen right. So uh, the, the key difference is that diversity may include genres that user has not played in past and uh, it helps them escape the filter bubble, just not that what they have seen we keep showing them, but also show them that what else exists and also maybe in that process discover their hidden interest and so on. So that's what diversity is. The two concepts are uh, similar but very different as well. Uh, calibrated recommendation also enhance diversity by uh, having a good representation of all the categories the user may be interested in and also diversity means that uh, we are also uh, showing them some categories that they might have not explored and also the recommendations are not very duplicate there in between the genres keeps on changing and so on. So uh, the change that they have done in the same algorithm is remember we had a target distribution which was representative of what user has watched. It was uh, created by looking at the proportion of user's history giving more weightage to the recent movies right. So what they have done, they have given uh, more weightage to the uh, target distribution which we had calculated. Uh, I will show it again. This is the target distribution, weighted average of movies they have seen and using that to determine the genres. They have said that we will give uh, more weightage to it but also some weightage we will give to other genres. Uh, and we will call it the prior distribution. So they add priors of other categories or genres they want uh, also to be coming in the uh, users recommendation list and how these priors are calculated priors can be calculated either by looking at uh, what in the platform all users which categories they like to see as a whole or it can be a uniform priors so they they have given some weightage to other categories as well and that they have done through some prior distribution and this is your new target distribution they are calling it p uh, tilde so this uh, value is the new modified target distribution or ideal distribution which uh, respects both the calibrated recommendations, all the interest of users which he has towards different categories and as well as adds few more categories with a prior probability that these categories should also be promoted and remaining algorithm remains the same. You modify your final uh, recommendation list, you do a re-ranking using some greedy optimization to uh, minimize the difference between 
uh, this modified target distribution and recommended distribution and recommended distribution how do you get you get it through the rank list you just check that in which rank you have promoted a genre in that way you can come up with the recommended distribution and you can just do a KL divergence between them and try to minimize it and trade off between relevance and that. So this is the extended calibration probability that's used instead of uh, the target distribution probability. And uh, that's it. We will also see the experiments results. So they have shown that if the lambda is zero, lambda means uh, in the final uh, loss function that we had seen, right? This is the final loss function that uh, the uh, final list should give some weightage to relevance as well as some weightage to calibrated recommendation. It should be a trade-off between the two. In this formula, if we say uh, lambda is zero, that is we are only preferring pure relevance. In that case, uh, the calibrated recommendations will be minimal. And as we increase the lambda, calibration recommendations will increase, right? So, that, so that's what they have shown when lambda is equal to zero. No weightage is given to calibrated recommendation my recall or relevance is highest and as I start increasing my lambda that is I start bringing calibrated recommendations also in picture my relevance may take a hit but my uh, KL divergence will reduce so KL divergence lower the value is better right so if you give more weightage to calibrated recommendation it may have a lower relevance but the KL divergence is close to zero it's becoming more and more calibrated and as um, it's clear that we need to find a trade-off that we are is the point where the two are balanced and that is a fair recommendations for the user. So finally they have concluded that the recommendation system which is just trained based on probabilities to maximize relevance is unbalanced and is, and is not very fair to bring fairness they have introduced the concept of calibrated recommendations and indeed uh, come up with a calibration matrix and a simple greedy optimization to balance trade off between relevance and calibrated recommendation. So it's a beautiful paper uh, and hope you liked and enjoyed the content. Uh, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates. Bye.